Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm joined today by Pastor Dan Slagle, who just finished part one of our Marriage Matters series. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. Sure thing. Really appreciate it. Now, in your sermon, you talked about the importance of husbands honoring their wives, right. uh, of treating them with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. And you made a specific point in your sermon about how men should talk positively about their wives, especially in front of others. And right. so this first question came in and this person wanted to know, don't you think it's a good idea for men to learn to always speak positively? Because as you know, it can be really easy for guys to get together and to start making jokes, that good old boy kind of humor, you yeah. know, the old ball and chain kind of stuff. Sure. And so how important is that for men to always speak positively? R right. About their wives? Well, uh, l let me put it this way. It needs to be as important to men as it is to their wives. Okay. I, I, mm -hmm. I think most men slip into that because they really don't understand right. the impact that it has on their mm -hmm. wives. Um, I remember my first job, uh, I was 14 years old. I got a, a job in a steel fabricating plant and um, I had never been around uh, people talking about their wives beyond my dad. Right. So I only ever had a positive example. And I remember my first day in the break room, I'm hearing these guys talking about their old lady and just saying horrible things and, and how completely puzzled I was by all of that. Uh, that has stuck with me over the years, that um, the way you speak of your wife, especially when she's not around, is an absolute indicator of how much you honor her. If she is constantly the butt of jokes and snide remarks and that sort of thing, then I, I don't think it can be said that you do honor her, that you right. do respect her. And even if you think it's just for fun, right. uh, it's not fun for her. Right, absolutely. And so th there's another question that came in um, where a person wanted to know, um, for those who are not married, for those who aren't husbands, right. um, wives, single women, for men, uh, what does this passage, uh, the First Peter passage, um, have to teach those of us who are not husbands? Right. Well, for women who are not married, let's say women uh, who are hoping one day to be married, okay. uh, this should give them an idea of the kind of man they want to look for. Okay. Uh, yeah. If the fellow that you're dating uh, is not exhibiting these sorts of things, but perhaps even the opposite, then my counsel to you would be to find somebody else right. to date. because. He's not going to get all better when you get married. If anything, it's going to get worse. Right. Uh, so l let this be a lesson to you about the kind of man I want to look for. Uh, let's say for an older woman who's not necessarily looking to get married, maybe she's been married, uh, maybe her husband is deceased, you know, whatever the case. Right. Um, this can be a good point of counsel and talking for the young women in your life that right. you mentor. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you want to paint a picture for them about the kind of man they ought to be looking for. So let it, let it be that. And then naturally for young men, as you think about being married one day, you need to be thinking about, okay, how will I live this out? Right. How will I be this kind of husband in right. my life? Right. So it's, it's a good uh, target to aim for. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So for the woman who is married mm -hmm. to a man who is not acting the way that First Peter, uh, the way that Peter's talking about in okay. this passage, uh, for for a woman who's married to a man, maybe who does the complete opposite, like what you were talking about, someone who does not treat them with respect, mm -hmm. who criticizes them, um, who uh, maybe even uses submission as a way to lord power over them in mm -hmm. a negative, hurtful way. Okay, um, what is the woman to do in that situation? Well, that uh, first, I would acknowledge. That is a terrible situation. Right. I, I can't imagine how trapped mm. someone must feel in that. Um, my counsel to that person would be uh, twofold. First, 
I, I would encourage them to come n next Sunday. Pastor okay. Ken is going to be talking about wives submitting to their husbands, and I'm sure he's going to get around to addressing this because this is the situation many women are in, many women who love God are in. Uh, but over the long term, uh, a, a single sermon or certainly a postscript answer are, are not going to be the, right. the full answer that, that this person needs. I would strongly encourage her to find a good biblical counselor, and we can help with that. We have lots of uh, counselors on a reference list here who can really walk with her because I'm sure there are many uh, circumstances surrounding this right. and uh, many things that this person would need to think about and that can't be done in a sermon or a postscript. Right. So uh, let us point you in the direction of a good counselor and let that person walk with you as Absolutely. you make those decisions. So come next week and hear Pastor Ken maybe even redefine submission for a lot of us who might, sure. might not fully understand what that sure means. Sure will, yeah. And then get in contact with us so we can get you in contact with a biblical counselor that can help right. your marriage. Yep. Very great. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Dan, for being here with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.